A. Ascertain the views of more audio and Sarawak on these questions. And B. In the light of the assessment of these views, to make recommendation. So this is how it got about earlier. After the agreement between the UK UK government and the Federation of Malaya. So the whole thing was brought to Sarawak and Sabah. So these are the briefly the inquiries and the response. Written letters and memoranda that were received from Sabah, there are 600. From Sarawak, there are 1,600. Then 4,000 persons in 690 groups appear before the commission to make oral presentations in 50 hearings conducted at 35 different centers, 20 in Sarawak, 15 in Sabah. And these are the crucial observations of the Covert Commission report, recorded at paragraph 237 of the report. It says, it is a necessary condition from the outset Malaysia should be regarded by all concerned as an association of partners, combining in a common interest to create a new nation but retain their own individualities. If any idea were to take root that Malaysia would involve a takeover of the Bonian territories in the Federation of Malaya, and the submersion of the individualities of North Borneo and Sarawak, Malaysia would not be generally acceptable or successful. I recommend that in the forthcoming negotiations, government should pay close attention to this point, both in its psychological and in its practical aspects. So, the emphasis is that we are partners. We are Territories. We are not part of the 13 states. It started from the Cover Commission report. Then it follows after the Cover Commission, then we have the inter intergovernmental report, intergovernmental committee meeting. Later, the ICC was established and to, to task with working out the future constitutional arrangement, including safeguards for the special interests of not only and Sarawak to cover such matter of religious freedom, education, representation in the federal parliament, the position of the indigenous race, control of immigration, citizenship, and the state constitutions. Taking conditions of the motions in the Sarawak and Sabah State Legislative Assembly, this was in 1963, 62, sorry, the IGC recommended, recommended that the requirement to safeguard the special interests of North Korea and Sarawak are by A. Amendment to the Constitution of the Federation of Malaya, and 2 undertaking an assurance to be given by the government of the Federation of Malaya rather than by constitutional provisions. So undertaking an assurance in addition to, in addition to the constitutional amendments. So on A, constitutional amendments, the IGC recommended the commission examined the constitution of the Federation of Malaya and this report sets out the amendments including transitional provisions with the committee which the committee considers will be necessary to meet the requirement of not Borneo and Sarawak, hereafter referred to as the Borneo State, and subject to this and the amendment necessary in relation to any other new states, except that the constitution of the Federation of Malaysia will be based upon the constitution of the Federation of Malaya as it applies in relation to the states which are as present states of the Federation of Malaya. On B, that is the recommendations undertaking assurances 
the IGC recommend as follows. In certain respect, the committee agrees that the requirements of the Borneo states could appropriately be met by undertakings and assurance to be given by the government of the Federation of Malaya rather than by constitutional provisions. And these are mentioned in the appropriate sections of this report. The committee agrees that the most important undertaking should be included in the former agreement and envisage that the other undertakings and assurances might be dealt with in exchange of letters between the government concern. So we have the Malaysian agreement after the recommendations that were made by IGC. The Malaysian agreement, it contains only 11 articles. It's a very short agreement. It is provided under Article 2 of the MSC 3 that it says, the government of the Federation of Malaya shall take such steps as may be appropriate and available to them to secure the enactment in the Parliament of the Federation of Malaya of an act, the form set out in Annex A to this agreement. Annex A is the Malaysian Act 1963. And that's brought into operation on 31st August 1963. This was taking the recommendation that was coming from the IGC and it was worked out the whole Malaysian Act 1963. Then we have the Article 8 of the MSC 3. And this talk about the assurances, undertakings and recommendations which we must take legislative, executive and other actions necessary. And all these are contained in Chapter 3, Section A, B to the report of IGC. In so far as they are not implemented by express provision in the Constitution of Malaysia. So that's why you have some changes to the Constitution and they say no, that doesn't cover all of it. There are a lot of assurances, there are a lot of undertakings, there are a lot of recommendations and these are contained everywhere. They are not made formal, some are formal. So chapter 3 is the proposed constitutional agreement, arrangement. And actually A is the legislative list, administrative arrangement and annexure. B is with regards to the public services. Hence when we talk about MSCD3, we have to look into a lot of things. The MSCD3 itself, the Corporate Commission's report, the ICC report, the Malaysian Act, all the annexure to all the agreements and the reports, and other documents and correspondences. And the courts, our federal court, actually put this in their judgment. And in a lot of their considerations, their judgments, these are there. In the Sugu, Suguma Barakistan's case, Dato Haji Muhammad Tufel's case, Robert Linky's case, Fung Fong Chan, and the dissenting judgment of the CJSS, the Chief Justice of Sabah and Sarawak, former Chief Justice of Sabah and Sarawak, Dato David Wong, dissenting judgment in the Tuaruba Santa's case. So these are all there. That's why we can actually go overseas abroad. But there are a lot of ways that we can do to implement the Malaysian agreement and to address the issue of the breaches of this agreement. So we have the MSC decree to provide safeguards to our autonomy and special interests, rights and position of the people of Sabah and Sarawak. But that is religion, language, education, administration, economy, and culture. All these are there, set up in all the documents that we have. But we have to look into all these documents. The present situation that we are facing, 
just now, of course, uh, that was we want to call, talk about the emergency ordinance that is described as a tragedy, not only to to Semenanjung Malaysia, but while it is not there's no racial strife or anything here, but it affects us very adversely. The PDA, led by good friend Tato John Lau, will address afterwards how it affect, how it increase our continental shelf, the control over the whole thing into just the uh, three of the map together with the PSA, Territorial Sea Act, but of course not just the constitutional provisions, we have to address other issues such as the signing of the tripartite agreement and together with the issue of uh, vesting, that time when we vested all our oil gas to patron us. But I leave it to Dr. John Lau to address this. Yes, and Dr. Sri also called, also mentioned about the amendment to of Article 1, bracket 2, why the necessary to revert back to the pre-1976, that we get back our rights, that we are regarded as the authorities and not just one of the states in the whole of Malaysia. So these are the issues, but I think I leave it to uh, the others to accept, to explain. But I want you to look at this uh, picture here that is very interesting. This is the photograph that was taken by <coughs> Lumpang. This is one of the kampong house in Sibanga. I think besides looking at all the tags, all the thing, we have to also address issues that are actually affecting the people um, to them, to all these families. So this is a kampong house in Sibanggan. This is the house that we, that they still, we still have. This photo was taken last week. So it's a system. It's rather because the parts that were done by the government actually fell apart for the last two years, but nobody cares. Nothing was done. So every time when there's a heavy rain, when the river overflows, it goes to the land, it destroys all the crops that they have. They are living in the house that is like this, in the Kampong. But if MS63 is implemented, if we have him, can we have better situations for these people in the Kampong? I'm sure we have. Because if we have all our rights back, if our position is restored to be a partner, of course, all the rights that are coming back to us, we can make sure that all Sarawakians will have better living, better conditions. Look at the house like this. You might not see the small thing in the middle of the house, but that is the BN flag. I mean, despite all this, but I put out a BN flag because in the kampong, of course, awareness is low. They are probably still thinking of the handout that are coming from the end in the coming election. So there are a lot of problems that we are facing that we need to address when we talk about MSC3. And the most important is the livelihood of all these people that we have to take care of them. So you have the erosion of all these rights, special interests, the position of Sabah and Sarawak, because they are trampled, they are eroded, they are ignored over the years. So what, when we talk about, we want to restore, we want to take back MSC tree. Why? Because okay, one of the main things that of course is very close to everybody's heart is the education of our children. So, look at education. In the Federal Constitution, now, it says this. 
item 13A, line shading, list, list, list 1, that is a federal list. Elementary, secondary, university education, vocational and technical education, training of teachers, registration and control of teachers, managing managers and schools, promotion of special studies and research, scientific and literary, literary society. So it covers all. Everything is the rights of the federal government. So it depends on them, whatever they want. So this morning, when I look at the paper, because my mind say we need more teachers, we want to employ some of the graduates that we have in Sarawak to teach, but we submitted the list, now we are waiting for federal. That is the situation it is. You can't even get our people to teach our children in the schools, even though they are qualified. You get other people coming from Sunan Jones and the others, wait for the federal government, but why do we need this when we have our people who can teach? But that is not what is written in the MSC country. This is what is in the IGC report. In the annexure A, because that is the constitutional arrangement that we have. The same nine schedule, legislative list, list one, legislative, the federal list. It says elementary, secondary, and university education, etc., subject to the undertaking of paragraph 17 of the ICC report. It says policies and system of administration should be undisturbed and remain under the control of the state government until the government otherwise agreed. One, policy on use of English as medium of instructions should continue. Two, education, director of education of the Borneo states to continue same duties in consultation with the state government officer. Local authority continues to be used as agents for primary schools. So these are what we have, actually. Because if we go back, we are the one who set the policy. We are the one who control the system of education in Sarawak. We are the one who can say that what to teach, what we have. In the constitutional arrangement, there is also, of course, the other provisions that, uh, on language, of mediums and all this. But we have to get all this back so that we have full control because we feel that the Malaysian educational system, how is it? Can we compete with other people in the world? I think it is difficult. So we must take back education. So we have to go back to MSU 3 to make sure these things are with us so that we can do it on our own. We can make sure that our children the, to have the best education that they can have in the world so that they can compete with all others in the world. That's why we have to go back to MSC 3. Of course, the next one is uh, oil and gas. So, presently under the Federal Constitution, this is in item, item A, F of the night schedule. The, the federal list, it says, subject to item 2C in the state list, development of mineral resources, mine, mining, mineral and mineral ores, oil and gas, oil and oil fuel, purchase, sales, import and export of minerals and mineral oils, petroleum product, regulations of labor and safety in mines and oil fields. It's a very lengthy one. Is a very lengthy one. But in the IGC report, it's very short actually. The same item and there was supposedly what we must have in the constitution. There's no mention of oil and oil fuels, no mention of purchase sales, import and export of mineral and mineral oils, no mention of petroleum products, no mention of regulations on labor and safety in mines and oil fuels because these are supposedly with the state. 
because at that time we already have the oil mining ordinance that was already in place. We already have oil field that were there. We were managing the whole thing. We give our license, we see how they operate. Everything is there, it's in the oil mall that we have. In Smaranjong, they don't even have that because there's no oil field in Smaranjong at the time. So we have. And it is very crucial. It says this is the Federal Constitution, Article 77, basically, power of legislation. So it says the legislature of a state shall have power to make law with respect to any matters not enumerated in any of the lists set up in the ninth schedule, not being a matter in respect of which parliament has power to make law. So we had the law at that time. <clears throat> so that is our right. Because if it is not there, it means the right belong to Sarawak. So why do we go back to MSC3? Because we have to take the, all this back. Dato Sri Wong said, his colleagues say it's a useless paper. There's nothing we can do with respect to oil and gas. That is not true. You see, if we go back to MSC3, all these are ours besides all the others. Because those are the constitutional provisions. Those are what is stated in the Malaysian agreement. All these are ours. So we can have everything back. Oil and gas, not just state sales tax, not just a bit of loyalty from them, which all the time we have to, to try to bargain with the federal government and try to get something. And until today, even though the sales tax we implemented in, 19, in 2019, they now agree to pay because we won in the court. But until today, not a single cent of it has come back from Petrobras. Of course, they have been here and there from all the other companies. But Petronas, there's still nothing from them. So these are just two examples. There are a lot more. If we go back to MSA3, there are a lot more of the rights and interests we are talking about. And all these things that can bring benefits to Sarawak. So but of course, you have to read, uh, read a lot of things like where are all these things that we, we can find all these rights. But of course, uh, then the state government in 1917, they made this London, London mission trip to London. Okay? This is what the assistant minister said. Copies of these documents have been obtained by the team from the British National Archives and from the Commonwealth Library and Archives at Marlborough House in London. The government is studying these documents to ascertain the basis for the recommendation contained under the ICC report of the Constitutional Safeguards of Sarawak and what further actions they need to be taken in order to have full implementation under Article 8 of the Malaysian Agreement if they have not already been incorporated in the Federal Constitution or by executive, legislative or other actions since September 16, 1963. I mean, of course, they talk about a lot of things. They talk about their documents and all this. I checked with them, they say there are millions of pages in documents that they have obtained from London. Must have spent a lot of money, but uh, until today, I've not seen any document that was coming forthcoming from them. So I move a motion in the due in November 2017, but of course it was called out because they make another ministerial motion. So then they say, oh. This is what is incorporated into the ministerial motion. So we depend on the minister forgetting about all this. And they refuse to give the documents. But of course, I think that is one thing that uh, we PSP can do. 
Because when it comes to power, maybe we should have our Sarawak National Archives. All this. And when we have, when we are the government, all these documents, how Malaysia come about, should be made open so that everybody can know how Sarawak comes into being and how we are part a partner in Malaysia and what are the rights that should come back to us. It's not just few of us, but everybody should have access to all these documents. Okay, in, uh, from May 2018 to February 2020, to me, I think that was the the best time. The best time when everybody moved forward to talk about rights of Sarawak and Sabah, Sabah the rights of Sarawak and Sabah, and MSC3, and we, we actually started a lot of initiatives to get back all these rights. That was the time when PH comes to the army. So, they were very keen to fulfill their promises under the manifesto, and one of it is the Special Cabinet Committee on Restoration of Special Rights of Sarawak and Sabah under the MSC3 that was formed on 5th September 2019. And the GPS government, because they are in the opposition at the time, they were very aggressive in pursuing Sarawak rights. So we set up the MSC3 Consultative Committee to advise the state government so that they take part in the Special Cabinet Committee to talk about the rights under MSC3 that must be restored to Sarawak. So we have all this, uh, I'm sorry if you can't read, but that's, that's what they say. So our new coordination on the formation of GPS, so our new coordination will enable us to focus on Sarawak's interests and rights based on the Malaysian Agreement 1963. GPS will uphold Sarawak's interests and determine the state's future on this call, said the Chief Minister. He said GPS, as an independent coordination of Sarawak-based parties, was no longer beholden to political masters from Peninsular Malaysia. We decided to leave Palestine because over the last 55 years, Peninsular politics affect us even though they have nothing to do with us. And of course, uh, the PRS president said, under Palisad, only Amno has a say and controls everything. So the truth only come out when they are in the other position. Right? So that's why they we know for 55 years why all the rights are trampled, eroded, why they are no, why we cannot get back the rights. Because the government under the alliance, under the Palestine National, they cannot say anything. Everything depended on Amno and the Simonanjo masters. These are what they say. These are what they say. I just quote what they say. So the cabinet special committee, special cabinet committee on the restoration of rights, these are something that they have done. So they have the meeting, started in November, November 2018. So they wanted to finish the whole thing in six months. Okay, they have a steering committee where the Prime Minister himself chair, our CM and a few others are there in the committee. They are the steering committee. We have the technical committee. I was there representing Sarawak. So we have a lot of working groups. So there are plenty of meetings over six months, seven months actually, because uh, there was a bit of delay. So it dragged until July 2018, 2019. So we actually, during those time, and after that, the working of the working committee and the others, 
17 out of 21 of the subject matters were agreed. Were agreed between the federal government and the state governments of Sarawak and Sabah that these rights are to be returned to Sarawak and Sabah to put them in that position. And they are given the power to legislate, administer, and control over these 17 matters. So the devolution of power is supposed to take place after that, this year. It is supposed to be happening. Only four of the 21 subject matters were not agreed. Yet, they were still in discussions between the AG chambers here and the AG chambers at the federal level. Those are, of course, concerning Territorial Sea Act, the boundaries, the oil rights, oil gas rights, and all these. They are in discussions. So, everything is ongoing and it's looking good as part one of what are the rights to be devolved, what are the rights and interests to be returned to Sarawak and Sarawak kids. Okay, then we, we come to the very interesting part huh? that is in February this year that the, the Perikatan National forms the federal government and the GPS joined the Pakatan Perikatan National to form the federal government. So we have our friends there, GPS, Amno, the Satu, PAS, MCA and the others, the other parties in the Muafaka and the Perikata. So it's going back to the federal. The state government is leading us back to the federal government with the, I don't know, they are the same faces that we had the last time in the end. But despite saying what they say, then they go back. So, when they go back, the first thing they do, actually, for the Perikatan government, now it's only six months in power, but the, one of the first things they did was disband the Special Select Committee, Cabinet Select Committee of MSC3, to restore the rights to Sarawak and Sabah. They disband totally. And they say, there's no need for a parliamentary select committee to look at how to return those rights anymore because there's no more cabinet select committee. Everything that was agreed is shared. Everything that was agreed is shared. So, you have these guys coming back now, then they say, if there's any decision to be made, our leaders in GPS will decide national interest as number one. <laughs> Secondly, the rights of Sawa. Change of view. And no need to make final report public. That is the cabinet select committee report. This is from the deputy minister who is uh, from GPS in the federal government. The government maintained the state not to make the final report from the Cabinet Special Committee to review the implementation of the Malaysia Agreement 1963 available to the public. This was because the documents has been classified as official secrets under the Official Secrets Act 1972. For the moment, the government maintains stand no need to, for the report to be distributed to the public as the content is technical in nature and involves sensitive matters. The government said there is no need for a parliamentary select committee on the implementation of the Malaysian MSC3 to be established for the time being, for the 
the government is of the opinion that the information of a special council suffice. There's no need for a PSC to be established for that purpose. So now they're back in the federal government. So I don't know, it looks like now we are going back to the position earlier. So don't know MSC3, but of course, one July ID a few days ago mentioned that yeah, we are setting up another committee. But you have gone so far. 17 subject matters have been agreed. Four are in the way to be agreed. Those rights can immediately be devolved to Sarawak and Sabah. Why are we disbanding the whole thing and say, let's start another cabinet committee to look into that? So they are backtracking. I don't know why they are not interested. Yet they say, we are, we are interested. And that is something that is a challenge for PSB because that is what we need to do. Because what do we do? If we come to power, because we are the only platform, then we can bring about the change now, but what are we going to do with this MSC tree? So GPS is a SQT. It is association with PN federal government. It has shown no sincerity, no determination to return and restore the full rights and autonomy of Sarawak. That you can see, we can see, because the proposed amendment to Article 1 and 2 that we were talking about just now, of the federal constitution, to restore the original status of the Borneo states was not supported by the GPS. That was in April 2019. And now, GPS says, through 1 July, three days ago, the amendment is just symbolic. Why do we want to do it? He said. So, there are four things that uh, I think we need to do if we come to power in the state. If we, we are managed, we can manage it, bring about a change to Sarawak now, make public all documents of MSC3. I think you are agreed to Sarawak. This one I have to consult Tato Sri a few days ago when I was preparing this because I think we think we agree that yeah why if we talk about emphasis on MSC3, the state government have an assistant minister. It's not a full minister, it's an assistant minister, and it's not a minister of MSC3, it's a minister of relation with the federal government and law. If you are taking this seriously, Dr. Sri said, we should have a ministry on the MSC3. <laughs> and this is the most important. We have really agreed to the 17 subject matters. If we come to government, we must immediately implement the 17 subject matters, devolve all the rights to Sarawak as phrase one. Phrase one. It's only phrase one because there are others' rights because we will be looking at all the others because we want to return full rights and special interests and the position of Sarawak. Then, of course, this is also very important, which was also suggested by Dato Sri, because we have to take care of Sarawak and all Sarawak kids. We talk about the people that we have, because right now, when there's some, something coming back from Simulan Zone, where does it go to? When uh, we have to appoint a director for Sarawak into the Petronas board, we actually get somebody who is a contractor to Petronas to sit there. We are not taking somebody who has knowledge of what are all these rights and who can fight for all these rights for us in Petronas but get a contractor to be, the, to be one of the directors representing them. Simon would say that, yeah, if you do that, that means you're giving everything to the contractor already, but 
he is not going to argue anything on the rights of the host land. But that's what they do. So we must set up a Sarawak Wealth Fund, which is a sovereign wealth fund, to take care of all the oil and gas operations, to take care of all the rights that are coming back to us, and make sure that all this will go back to all the Sarawakians, to all the families, to make sure that nobody has to be poor. Everybody enjoy all the benefits, all the resources that we have in Sarawak. So, the sun will rise. The hope will be a reality if PSB comes to power. Can we ensure that? Yeah. So that's why we need the change now to be in Sarawak. Thank you very much. Thank you, YBC. Um, we have some Q&A.